Well, that's a drum kit for you. And there's another one there. Hmm. That's very unusual and very interesting. It's about this time of the morning when we uh, participate in a coffee. So before I start looking for subjects, I'm going to go up the steps and into the castle cap. Well, we're now inside the grounds of the lovely Hay Castle. Well, there's my first subject of the day. Well, here we go. Um, I'll produ produce the drawing. It's the old clock tower um, here, well, just over the border from where, where I'm staying in um, Hay on Wise, just over the border into Powys. And um, it's a lovely subject. Um, the tower slightly off the centre to the left buildings going down the little narrow street uh, and around the corner lovely little square there uh, went there today so while it's fresh in my mind I want to get some colour down first thing I'm going to do is to paint a, it's a pretty much a blue sky so um, that works for me quite well so what I'm going to do not even damped my colours yet but uh, let's just damp my colours now the colours I'm using is the same arrangement as I've had before. Um, now, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, just lightly damp a little bit of paint, uh, water there. Just lightly damp the sky around the clock tower roof and around that area there. Um, I say lightly damped. It's fairly fairly neatly done. The, the thing is that it's quite a, a warm day again, there's a warming breeze, well not, it's a breeze, it's not that warming but there is a breeze. And the first thing I'm going to do, we may very well have a little bit of cloud so I'm just picking up a little bit of raw sienna and just dropping that in in places like that. Then, then I'm going to introduce uh, the lovely Prussian blue, but I'm not going to put that Windsor blue, Huelo blue. I'm putting that, we're having the sun coming from the left, so on the right hand side here, we're going to have a deep blue, which is always a good thing to do when you've got just to determine, it sort of determines the direction of light really. And see the way it bleeds in and around that yellow. Just going to put a little speck in there because we've got a um, an overhanging um, guttering. Now, as I've always said, what you do to the right, you do to the left of any sort of tower that you're painting. And I've left that unpainted so I can pick around that. Hopefully, although it is black or dark. Um, there and um, all being well we should get a lovely fern of light onto that area right now I'm cutting down there now it's quite wet there so just gently I don't want to make this too fussy it's um it's a problem sometimes when you're depicting things of this sort that uh, if you make it too fussy then you're, um, you know, you're not really helping yourself with the depiction that you're looking for. Um, right, so that's in. Right, now where the sun's coming, I'm going to put in a bit of light red into the raw sienna. It's light red this time into the raw sienna to get, to get that nice warm orange glow. And that's going to sit there and just be swept in to that area and that's all you've got to do to create a light feel coming from from the left 
to the right. Just picking around the roof there. And all we need to do now, the clouds have virtually disappeared. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the tops of the clouds back by just lifting off. Just lifting off a bit of colour there. That's it. See the way it's created a cloud? And I'm going to have another one there in amongst the. Just extend that too to there. Well, I'll be quite honest, that needs very little treatment now. Just going around the chimney, lifting off colour as much as anything, I want that to be fairly light there. That's it. Just before that dries, I'm going to have raw sienna into that uh, Windsor or Prussian blue, whichever you're using, and I'm just going to drop that in there while it's still damp because I want a soft feel to that distant area of greenery. There's a there's like a around that chimney there's a bit of greenery there. I don't want to show too much of that in as much as a deep colour and finish on top of the roof line there there and that sort of heads towards that building and that is all we need to do for that. Just going to let that dry and blend in in its own way. That's the key to these uh, subjects. Now we've got some cream in the distance so I'm using a bit of raw sienna with the light red. There may be a little bit of blue in there but this is this very light distant cream colour. So that's that one. Put that in first like that and then what else we got oh we've got another cream well I'm going to use burnt umber for this a bit of burnt umber going in with the raw sienna gives me a lovely sort of yellowy cream it has to be very very weak because that's going to go here it's a bit brown let's I want just a little a bit more yellow to that let's add a bit of that's it. Yeah, that's not exactly. It's slightly... There you go. Look at that. Now that, to me, is pretty much a perfect sort of cream that I'm looking for. Um, I know it looks a little on the green side. Um, let's put a little bit of red. A bit of, see what we get with that. Well, never mind. Let's just go with it. Just watch it flow. Go with the flow, as they say. And uh, when you wash these buildings in, try, as you go down, try and weaken the colour. And all I do is just keep painting. And um, it does go right down, yep. Can we see any cream there? We can't actually, so we'll lift that away. Um, a little bit there, a little bit there, a bit there, and we draw that across. And that's... All you need to do for the basic start of that area. Just lifting off there. Um, good. Now the grey for this building, burnt umber. I always start with burnt umber for greys normally. I'm putting uh, cobalt blue with that and see what I get. It's all light because that's the sunlit side. It's like a, yeah, that's the grey I'm looking for stone, very much stone grey. There you go. And what I'm going to do, I've decided, as I'm working, whoops, don't want to run over there. Now if you notice, I'm not trying to keep them windows dead perfect. I don't want that sort of feel. Uh, as I work down, I'm going to add a little light red with that because I want that to warm up a touch, albeit nice and weak. There you go. There we are. See the way, and I'm just going to touch that in just so as it introduces that area. And yeah, we've got a little bit there, we can see a little bit there, a little bit there. Touch there. Can we see any on the corner? Mm, probably not. 
So we'll finish that like that. Perfect. Now that is what I would say a typical stone grey that we will see here, well actually there in Paris on the borders of Herefordshire and Wales. Now I've added cobalt blue to that just to give it a more slightly, see how that's slightly sort of less intense grey because that is the colour of the distant buildings. Still stone and I'm sure that's still stone where it's going to be and notice how I've even made that lighter in the distance. Um, so that's um, it's always uh, important really if you can just lifting off a bit of colour, lift off a bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there and a tad there there we go. So that's the distance. Um, oh, the grey slate. Right, cobalt blue and light red again. So it still creates that sort of grey. Much darker, so a stronger mix. Um, not too strong. Got to be careful with this and not too much red because we're still talking about distant buildings. And so we've got the grey slate there, but obviously it needs to be uh, there's, a corner, there's a little apex of a building there. But other than that, there we go. That's that part in. Just hope that's dry. Yep, it sure is. And then there's that area there. Um, just trying to work out. Oh, right, that's a chimney. Sorry. <coughs> that is a chimney there. And that's the corner of that building. So we're looking at the really the buildings in the background. Trying to gradually work my way forward and away. Now that same grey can be used for the sunlit side on the right hand side. Plenty of blue because it's grey slate you see. Um, am I going to go dark with this? Not really, no. Um, it's got to be a little darker perhaps. A little bit more blue to make it a bit more grey. There we go. A little bit darker than what I've just painted. And it finishes on the corner of that building. There's shadow under there so we're not too concerned about that. Notice a little bead of white, always a good thing to do. Um, now the tower itself, overall, is going to be quite cream. I'm using raw sienna. Raw sienna. With a little of, there we go, that's like a greeny shade, that's white, that's grey and this is just going to have so like a, a very light wash of, of the lighter cream that will eventually be painted over in places There we go. Now as we come down, just going to add more raw sienna because we need to, in places, just give that a touch of warmth, particularly in the lower area, because some of that, there we go, like that, like that, like that, like that, and that's black railings, so we can leave that at that. Um, there you go. That's part of the tower done. Well, while I have the nice cool grey in my mix, I'm adding a little more blue um, to create the blue-grey tile work of... Whoops, gone over a bit there. I can always lift that off at a later date. Didn't really want that. But hey-ho. 
as I always say, go with the flow. There we go, and this one is the same. It's a little bit powerful. This one won't be quite as much, for obvious reasons, run, running out of paint. So, and that just peaks out there and finishes somewhere like that. So that's those two areas like that. That also has a touch on there. Um, that's good. In actual fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that slightly darker, although just lift away a bit. I'm leaving that slightly darker. Um, we're getting there. Now I want to add depth to this road. So I'm putting it in almost blue to start. Well, it is blue, really. Cobalt. Then I'm adding a little bit of red to that. Just so as that tends to come forward. And then right in the foreground there, I'm stroking in some feeling of red at the angle, at the position of the road. Just like that. I'm just going across first. That's right. Now I'm going to pull down. There we are. See the way you've got a feeling of depth? Nice blue as it goes around the corner. Um, the path is um, a little bit more sort of put a bit of raw sienna with that just to ring the changes for the path. There you go. Um, albeit very light. There we are. So that heads off there like that. Oh, we'll, we'll do that as well. The reason why I'm not doing anything to the left hand side because that's basically all in shadow. So that's the intriguing part of this that um, that will all be revealed uh, later on. Now I'm going to put the windows in. Um, the first ones there are quite light. So we're almost going to leave those, although let's put a little bit there again, creamy colour. Um, again, burnt umber, raw sienna, a little bit of light red in there. I want a little bit of a warm cream. There we go. And it's got to be very light as normal. So it's sort of like a warmer cream. It's, a lot of this is going to be in shadow anyway. So we're not too concerned. In fact, we're never really concerned. That's the fun of painting because they really make a lot of difference. Um, might be a little warm for what we're looking for, but as I say, let's just lift a bit off. There we are. So it's come back to cream now. I've lightened it. That's good. And then the lower area, it's more burnt umber. With a little ultramarine in there. I oh, know. Let's use cobalt. There we are. Because it's very dark brown. Although, it's not quite as dark as it actually appears. Purely because... That's got sunlight, so, and that's a shop frontage, I think, it is of some sort, painting around the figure there and around that little figure there, put a window in at some point, um, another little door there, or whatever, another little bit of section there, and then of course this is another window which we can't really see much of that side and that's pretty much that gone in there we go coming along nicely now on the right hand side here the window frames are it's like a creamy grey like that really although there again probably being shadow but Let's just paint them in anyway, like that, like that. Oh, they've got a, they've got a sill as well. There you go. Mustn't forget to put that sill in. Um, put that in as well because that's the frame. That's actually the wall. But um, once we get the, um, see, so immediately we can see the direction of light. 
Um, can we see anything of the frame? No, I'm not even going to put much anything of the frame on the right hand side. Let's um, let's not be doing with that. Now this frontage, it's a nice little bit of overhang there, and that goes right in the door frame. And it's not until we do the shadow work that you'll actually appreciate that. So it looks. And that joins the window, I understand. Or well, at least I hope it does. Because that's the way I'm depicting it. And that's quite a depth to that window and the sill. They're all very, very deep. That's it. Good. Now I'm adding more blue to this now. Because this... Actually, that window frame has got a little bit more blue. And this one... Oh, that uh, has a bit more blue too. Oh, nice deep frames. Really looking forward to that. Putting those in. There you have it. Good, well, the sun's just coming onto the paper now, so just before I finish, I'm just going to put some colour onto this. And the reason why I left it for last because I want to show you exactly obviously I've got a, quite a bit more to do there but what I'd like to show you exactly what I'm going to do with that well I'm going to use cobalt blue plenty of it may seem a bit of a funny thing to do but this is all in shadow and that, then it comes into a cream. Right. So I'm going right the way down with that. Shall we go right the way down? Go on then. Let's be a devil. You know. Right. Now I'm adding Indian red to that mix to make a slightly darker tone. See how lovely and dark that is because this is all in shadow so is that but let's just deal with this area first there we are as we come down it gets a little bit light I've gone around the window this time for no reason other than because it's a window I'll just leave it into another area right now I'm using Windsor Blue produced Prussian and the Indian red right and a little cobalt look at that see how that makes it let's put a bit more blue there we go we get a lovely sense of sunlight catching the rest of the build across the road purely because we've drawn in that and see how I'm going around that window it's just staying really there we go and as I come down I'm adding more Indian red and that is the key to this painting to achieve the right tone I'm going around the window there too because you've got to remember although it's in shadow there is sunlight of some form um, hitting, coming back from the uh, buildings there. Um, now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going in with a little bit of burnt umber now, because this, I'm going to draw that paint into that area. See the way? I'll, so that's a cream, but that's in shadow. Right, that's stone in shadow, that's a cream in shadow. Then I'm going back in with even more cobalt because this area is also in shadow. There, and that finishes there. There we go, look at that. And I understand this is the old this is the, um, the toilet area, but it's all in shadow, 
so we're not going to um, depict anything of that sort of area there perhaps a couple of little bits and bobs main thing is at this stage oh, I'm just going to go over the around the planting or oh, and around that figure vital that we go around that figure like that always be bold with your uh, with your um, application just try and hold that figure because I'd like that figure to be quite prominent in the whole scheme of things so hopefully we can leave that figure unpainted and of course we can then go down with that darker shade down there good that is the start of the feeling of shadow on that left hand side well I've moved inside because the sun was beginning to get around a bit so um, moved inside to the trough here at Mole Hill Hut in Herefordshire um, as I say I call it my studio this week um, right now windows um, not a difficult thing um, actually what I'm going to do because we're looking at the sunlight we'll probably see some blue um, because we're looking at the direct sun so what I'm going to do I'm just going to use Windsor blue or Prussian blue um, and just sneak down like that to start see the way you just brush down and money down the top parts and see the way the windows are the you get that glazed effect there we are a bit more on one not so much on another get a film of light coming in on the bottom panes of glass just go down a little bit further with those just in a rough form there we go and now the others i'm going to use the same color the the winds of blue but i'm going to put indian red with this to make it a bit darker just lose some paint because further down the the street the windows are somewhat darker i'm sure and um actually put those in a little bit more strength like that and there again nothing to um just suggestive nothing too fussy and in the distance these are going to be the same just simply addressed like that oh and there's another window there there we are um so that's the windows in um right a little bit of guttering just so i'm going to use the number six now for a little bit of guttering um this is like a cream gutter again so we're going to use the 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 um raw sienna uh burnt umber and it's like a greeny so i'm going to put a little bit of windsor with that see what we get well that's quite green probably too green actually let's uh, wipe a bit of color away uh, sorry a bit of strength away and just see what we get right so to turn that cream we want a bit of red you know it's, it's quite a juggle it's quite a juggle this mixing business let's just go in ah there you go look i've just put it into that other mix there and uh, that's more or less the um the mix i'm looking for isn't that amazing you know the gutter runs down there like that and of course we've got the the gutter up there it's painted you see painted cream uh the other gutter is black well that's easy enough to do and that is ultramarine blue with burnt umber and pick up a bit of moisture you know if you don't want too much moisture on your brush just pick up a little bit of a puddle area from from uh whoops from the other side really from the from another puddle there see that it does make a great deal of difference to the color only looking for a, a dark sort of um 
well it's black but don't like to call it black and do we have a downpipe I'm not really sure about that so I'm leaving that at that any other dark color that we really need to put in at this stage no right clean the brush now there is some graying of this um, so I'm going to go in there I've picked up a little bit of this um, grey a bit more brown than that there we are and what we've got we've got a certain amount of um, I mean this is stonework um, yeah that's a bit more pick up a bit of that black with it or that dark colour I use for the gutter um, and I'm trying to pick up a little bit of that stonework and if you notice it's, see that's too fussy right so all you do you just sweep it through so you soften some areas keep other areas light there we are once that dries it looks more like stonework and what have we got here oh we've got stonework here as well that's gone a little bit lighter which is good at the low area and I'm just putting that in like that bit of stonework there we're not going to um, make too much of this at all and that could be a little bit stonework there good um, <coughs> I don't think I'm even going to worry about gutters in the distance um, I suppose uh, let's put in the figures right I'm going to put a got a bit of red there I'm going to use this red as that figure there there we are and I'm going to put some blue in so that's cobalt blue for the other little chappy that's apparently got the dog there for all accounts well and um this one i think has got shorts on so let's use a like a skin tone um wasn't a bad day there so yeah uh that's good enough and of course the dog well i always like black dogs <laughs> for some unknown reason which um and i have to watch out because they look more like cats if i'm not careful but anyway there you go um clock right we have black dials and the the we're talking about one o'clock here sorry quarter to one there we go might as well put that in um <clears throat> now let's do the darker windows um on the clock tower um the presumably that's the bell windows there like that um we have also another window there like that um where else do we oh, i think that's about it oh and let's while we've got this let's produce the lovely old weather vane now i'm only putting it on the back edge because a little bit of ornate feel to that um a bit too much on the brush that's going to be a bit heavy and then it got, shoots off up and a little bit of like that take that back there you go uh that's all right just take it back a little bit there we go um that's fine yeah we'll we'll accept that let's take a little bit away from that there there we go um <clears throat> okay um we're going to start thinking about the the shadows from the 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 building uh, on the left now I'm going with Windsor Blue and Olizarin Crimson for this um, trying to get a bit of transparency not too dark uh, to start because I'm putting in the shadows um, 
down the left hand side of that chimney there and left hand side of the chimney pot and of course the surrounding uh, stonework or brickwork around the pot there's another touch there can't really see that one there so let's just soften that off okay that'll be all right in a minute um good now we've got a, an overhang gutter there and there so we're not seeing a great deal a little bit from the window reveal there and there and that window reveal there and there uh oh, and of course that one I to remember that one and immediately that distance sort of stands out and also we can just about see the gable end point the apex of the gable in there so that's going in it will dry up quick uh, lighter than that and let's just finish that neatly there right now the rest of the uh, same two mix and I'm adding a bit more red with this okay then I'm going to put alizarin crimson with it because that just gives it a bit more it bulks it a little bit more if that's the word and all of a sudden I'm, I'm going to leave the the side of the gutter uh, or the edge of the gutter at the top because you've got to remember it's probably got uh, well it has got sunlight catching it but first thing you do you go under there like that and take that up leaving the top of the gutter unpainted then it goes in and really nice bit of depth like that there we are and all of a sudden we've got that lovely feel now I'm adding more red and more blue to that mix and I'm going down there and across down there and across look at the way that that brings that those build those windows out and then all of a sudden hey presto you got yourself some lovely sunlit windows look at that isn't that one of the easiest things one could do when painting and right under the sill nice bit and of course the ends of the sill lights coming slightly behind this and that sill whoops run that out of picture like that we'll lose that shortly that's not a problem in actual fact, that, that goes up there. I've missed a bit of that corner off. Still, it doesn't matter. Um, and of course, under the sill there and the end. Under the sill there and the end. Under the sill there and the end. And then we've got under that sign. And there's some supports there. So we'll leave those light. But that more or less runs under like that and then down that side of the window like that um, and also we do have a bit coming in there like that at that angle for that door and then of course we have the door frame that really pretty much uh, all in shadow because it sits back so far and that goes right down there we go and then we've got the sill there again um, that drops in like that I seem to uh, remember but of course um, I'm depicting it with that in shadow which it wasn't quite but I just feel that that brings the whole thing to life there we are 
and away we go with the rest really and um, bring that down to that seal area that's it and this one's the same oh let's do the the overhang the gutter first and that finishes nicely along that edge then we run down like that don't cover too much of that glazing always nice to have a little bit of glazing left and the seal again um, touch down there touch under there and inside that window inside that area there under there and inside there leave a bit of glazing a little bit there like that there we go look at the way all of a sudden the sunlight pours onto that um, area right now we've got underneath there right and I'm just going to gently tease out a little bit there a little bit down that edge um, let me see ah right there is certainly a tuck back to that roof there and there watch I don't lean on any of the original paint I've done that many times and then of course under the overhang of that roof line there like that and really I've always said these things are all you know it, it's all about shadows really you know um, there should use a smaller brush but I want to keep it loose and that then more or less finishes right it just eases away there underneath there um, does that come away oh there's, there's a small area there that stands out so there we go and another area there that stands out there's a piece there and that comes down um, nice little bit across there little piece across there and then of course these buttress areas cast a shadow like that there we go and that finishes there um, yeah I'll be happy with that that is perfect good and what I'm going to do the reflection on that buttress there I'm going to make lighter just so we can determine exactly what is the buttress and what is the reflection I should tidy that up shortly and then finally we've got the lovely oh a little bit more blue with this now because I want the cooler grey to be cast now that building will cast a shadow right the way across and that, whoops, that would cast across there, down across there, across into there. Um, oh, and I'm going to use a bit of this within that and that we don't need shadow there. Uh, but of course it doesn't cast across Let's have that bit of an angle. It doesn't cast across because that's a light distance. Now it's going to go over some of these flowers. And that's what they call trying to get that lovely dappled light. And of course the end of that. There we go. At an angle. Like that. Now that tapers off like that and may very well come to that at that sort of angle there and then that casts a small shadow not too long for that and what else have we got there we are um, and as I say more blue in this mix will make all the difference to uh, the feel of the whole thing that's it and that I'm, I'm deepening that and sharpening up that corner just to um, to bring the change. It's going over part of that figure like that, and I can improve on all of that shortly. 
And to justify that, I'm then going to bring that across like that, with perhaps a apex of some sort coming there, like that. And then this building, so that then runs off at that angle, like that. Isn't that brilliant? This painting business um, is really uh, so refreshing. Um, and then this shadow would run right the way across like that. Well, that's the way I'm making it run anyway. Um, because that's a building that's very, very close to us. And then we've got some little touches here in the basket work. This bas basket there. Um, then on the end there, um, down the wall, there like that, and of course the back of that would reflect like on that. You'd have the figures, perhaps the back of the figures, um, there like that, legs, of course under the dog. Now the, ref the shadow of the figures would get run across like that and then up the wall. So that's how was quite a nice little thing to do um good okay and now we're going to have a secondary sort of shadow on this window there and that runs out of picture and the the bring that right the way down and under there so I was, I'm, I'm trying to put a little bit of shadow within the shadow of this um, area that's actually in shadow, really. Um, good, let's allow that to dry. And I think we're into our um, final finishing touches. And uh, where do we put them? Well, let's start on this left-hand side here. We're going to put in, it's just a darker mix of um, the uh, colour we had really um, on the hair there uh, yeah like that figure there that's it um, good now finishing touches railings Notice how I didn't talk when I did that. And where the railings sit on the road. One, two little touches on the back edge of that. There we go, that's sharpened up. Where that sits on the road. The figure's legs. As he strides across, or she strides across the, the road. Um, Oh, the, let's just, just sharpen where this path comes along. The, there we go, just to show a little bit of where the path meets the, um, uh, the, path, the pavement meets the buildings. And also, perhaps, we have got a hint here of the odd curb stone there we go and also now let's let's just attend to this a little bit more because we do need um, <coughs> something a little stronger here um, right there's a gutter there oh, sorry a edge there there's like a downpipe here so I'm going to put that in um, and that goes into the building, like that. Um, and then it comes to something a little less strong because that's, it's a proper downpipe that actually sits behind that. And that finishes that corner off nicely. I think that probably is nice to have a little bit of uh, uh, idea of windows there like that just so as we can see it's a window 
and uh, what we got here well let's have a couple of uprights can't really see this actually um, but that's good enough for that you know we don't want to highlight that too much but it's uh, certainly nice to put it in should be at a bit of an angle really let's just call that a glazed area like that and we'll now we're losing paint from the brush we'll just glaze that up um, brilliant that's it and well I've got a feeling if we're not careful we're working for working sake you know we're, we're putting colour on we don't really need it it's just a separation of the roof there um, not too much detail in that distance and um, just a hint at some darker um, sort of uh, undersides of the windows there just just to give that an addition an additional feel inside there a bit more sort of um, reflective feel um, you know it's, it's fun this playing with windows you know one wrong bus stroke and uh, you've uh, sort of well you're not blown it but it's um, not quite as good um, oh we've got burnt umber here quickly because there is a um a lintel a wooden lintel and for obvious reasons that would need to be oak one would have thought um now this is stonework here so what i'm going to do i'm going to just hint at this um in a very in informal manner Um, just running around like that with the point of the brush really remembering perspective here we are don't make too many crosses um, it's always best and, and of course it's perspective that gives that um, feel you know if you're gonna produce some um, this sort of thing notice how I'm going down there um, with these uh, little touches just miss I've just noticed I've missed them um, a bit of shadow so I'm going to put that in there for that gutter back edge and down onto the wall like that Good, and I'm putting a little bit more shadow on the uh, just where it turns in. I always feel that under the gutter there would probably be a stronger shadow than above, but um, that's all some little touches there. Um, oh, it just brings that down like that. That is a Cable in there, um, that's perfect. Brilliant. Well, I think I'm going to lift away a little there because that buttress is much lighter, right? So I'm going to lift away there and then just put a minimal shadow onto the slope area that side. And can you see immediately you've got the feeling? That that's in sunlight and that's in shadow and we've already got that there so um, you know let's uh, let's not overdo things this is this is the um, oh there's a couple of windows there um, very little suggestion there um, I don't think we need to do too much more to that um, we need that surround to be taken away and there we have it, 
the surround has been taken away just need signing I'm going to sign it in that bottom right hand corner in the paint that I've used obviously um, and uh, That's Colin Steed in the same signature. Um, just got to put a little bit. I haven't uh, done any to that. There we go. That's part of the wall. There we are. That finishes that corner off, really. Whoops. Don't go over. There's a nice, neat line down there. Ah, uh, good. Well, there you have it. That is the clock tower in Hay on Wall as seen today. Please subscribe if you like my videos.